Well, I want to, I'm a folklorist by training and I get kind of, I have to like share bits of information that may or may not be interesting. But I think if you're into this music, you're generally into this stuff. So before we kind of launch into banjo y things, um, and I guess we'll do this out of the key of D. I heard people discussing this. On that rec the, this video that I made, I just when I'm around the house, I just will play the banjo down tuned low because I just like how it sounds. And maybe we just need to start getting fiddlers to just tune down to match where we are. I think that's a good move. Are y'all ready to do that? I think 2021, when we can finally see our pals' faces and make some music, we got to make them just tune down to where we are. Um, we can just be uh, united on that front. But so I'm in the key of D though. More or less, more now than less. <laughs> um, I want to show you a couple of, I want to, so um, Clyde Davenport's probably a familiar uh, person to folks, right? I mean, people talk about Clyde tunes. You've heard uh, when I was emailing with, um, with Alan, and uh, Steve Wise, I think we were, they were saying how when Alice Gerard and Tom and Brad came long ago, which what a band that was, that this was one of the tunes that I think they kind of brought with them and, and they play it beautifully, this five miles from town. But uh, the person behind the tune is Clyde Davenport and the tune itself is played in a particular area. And I just wanna show you where this is on a map because I think it's, it's interesting and helpful to know that. And I'm, I have a little bit of this academic thing, amazingly, maybe surprisingly. And so let me just, I'm going to queue up a little, a couple of slides just to, to let you see where we're talking about. Um, this will take one sec. Multimedia presentations on the internet. Okay. Are you seeing this? Um, you're seeing this slide, I assume. So here's what we're talking about. We're talking, I grew up down, um, in the corner of if you go to Tennessee, if you go to Knoxville and you head southwest just along the state line, I grew up kind of down in Chattanooga, which is uh, right above that bottom line, just go south of Knoxville. And there's a mountain range there. It's not the Blue Ridge Mountains, it's the Cumberland Plateau. And uh, it's a plateau. It's about 1700 feet high 1800 feet high and it runs all the way from down in alabama which is on the bottom there's four states alabama would be the uh the third one from the right the cumberland plateau runs all the way from alabama up into this area that's the rectangular area on the map and then into kentucky and then joins in with kind of the bigger appalachian region um it's where I grew up, it's like a sandstone bluffs and, and creeks that carve through them. There's a bit of coal there. There's uh, right where I, I grew up in just north of Chattanooga and on a community called Walden's Ridge. And if you go up a little bit on the ridge, there was a community called Bakewell where there was coal mining and a bunch of Welsh people live there. So like a lot of uh, there's some Welsh communities in this area anyway continue up that and you get the cumberland plateau just kind of running through there um but we're kind of looking today at uh, the northern end of the cumberland plateau and right along the tennessee kentucky line is where some amazing music happened it's like my favorite some of my favorite music i uh there are two county records do you know county records like the record label that I guess they kind of went out of business and now they're back, but they, there were two issues, two vinyl issues. Um, one was called five miles from town and the other was called getting up the stairs. And they're both incredible recordings. If you can get your hands on them and they document the music of this area. Now the area was pretty rugged. It was a, um, like a, a lot of logging. This is a picture from right along the, uh, the border. Um, but there was a lot of music. And here's a, a closer up of this kind of, this comes from the liner notes to the album. You can see kind of uh, right here, the line that's dividing is the Tennessee Kentucky line. And so um, the man that we're talking about today, if you look on the map on the right, you'll see uh, in the upper right corner, Mount Pisgah. 
and Clyde kind of grew up around that area in a place called the Blue Hole Holler. And if you're curious about Clyde and his music and would like to spend a little bit of time with him, my friend Buddy Ingram has posted a uh, fantastic, uh, well, I think it's fantastically goofy and it's Clyde had a peculiar sense of humor and it comes through a little bit in this. It's called Shades of Clyde and it's a, it's a short documentary that uh, Buddy made of Clyde playing his music and kind of going and visiting his old home place. It's up on YouTube. So Shades of Clyde, it's worth checking out if, if you just want to kind of get a sense for his music. And he plays a little bit of banjo in there so you can see that. But he grew up in Mount Pisgah. And then just further up from Mount Pisgah, um, to the north here, up on the upper end on the left map, the top of the map, Monticello, Kentucky. That's how they say it there. That's where Clyde lived um, for most of his life. That's where he passed away. He just passed away last year at 98. Um, Monticello is just a tiny little town. There's a uh, courthouse there. If you're familiar with uh, Dick Burnett and Leonard Rutherford, you should. if you're not, you should check them out. It's some great uh, 1920s claw hammer playing. You can hop. They, those guys used to play on the, uh, on the courthouse lawn. People would come and listen. Dick Burnett had, uh, had lost his eyesight running some kind of hustle and had been shot in the face and could not see. And then he, uh, he popularized the song man of constant sorrows in his area. Um, he would attach a little tin cup to his, to his knee and and sit there and tap it and so it would shake and jingle so that people would know to give him tips when they were walking by um so clyde as a young man when he'd go into town he'd hear these two and he just absorbed it all so he learned that banjo style that uh that that uh fiddling style it's a smooth fiddling style it's beautiful but um leonard rutherford and dick burnett also learned some of their music from an african-american player named cooge bertram um who who played a lot of the same repertoire. So this was an area where black and white people were all playing music together, even though it's in the mountains and people don't necessarily always remember that that's a piece of the thing. But uh, so Monticello is up there. This was just a rich musical area. I wanna show you just, here's a little picture of, uh, uh, well, Clyde was Clyde here on the right with those walrus mustache, hanging out with a couple of, neighbors and friends that's uh the troxel brothers there um with banjos and then sitting down that's virgil anderson great player so this was just a musically rich area on the left is a picture of clyde's uh father who was born in 1868 his name was will davenport um he passed away in i think like 1950 or something like that uh so Musical family, Clyde's music came from like listening to Leonard Rutherford and Dick Burnett. If you have never listened to them, you got to get your hands on some of that, get your ears on it. And uh, and so this deep family repertoire dating back to the 19th century and then uh, neighbors like Dick Burnett and Leonard Rutherford. So this particular tune, um, as I understand it, it it, it was played by several players up in this area. Virgil Anderson, if you've never heard Virgil Anderson's banjo playing, um, look online for some of it. It is, I think it's just incredibly creative and beautiful and it's old time and it's not necessarily claw hammer. A lot of these players played multiple styles. They'd play a little claw hammer. They'd play some up picking stuff. They'd play some, a, a thing I call the flip. I might show that to you if we kind of have time at the end of this or might be something that I'll do in one of these banjo workshops down the road. Um, so we got this tune five miles from, to, or out of town. I don't really, different players up there called it by different, use different prepositions with it. Uh, but one thing that uh, that I've heard is that it people attribute the tune to, um, I think, Cooge Bertram, the, the black fiddler's father. So he was playing this thing um, whether he was the first person to get on it, we don't know, but uh, it was it was part of both the black and white kind of musical community up there. And then I guess before we launch in, I know I'm a little long winded. I hope this is somewhat interesting. Here's a picture I took of uh, Clyde and his dog Tiny a couple years ago. I just love this picture. It's 
a study in a uh, scale. <laughs> Tiny was a, I guess some sort of little chihuahua mix. He would like get behind, you'd be sitting on the couch and then he somehow managed to get behind your back. Clyde would sit there on the couch with the mammoth plug chewing tobacco and carve off little bits and had like a cool whip container, which is like fake whipped cream. And he'd sit there for hours and just play music with him. And then he wouldn't spit. He'd have chewing tobacco and then he wouldn't spit. And then finally, after like <laughs> an hour of, of uh, you know, not just having this stuff in his mouth, he'd lean forward and spew forth this amazing kind of absurd and disgusting stream of tobacco juice. Okay, sorry, you didn't need to know that. That was unnecessary. I'm going to stop the screen share and let's mess with some banjo stuff. So, um, now I'll say I, I can never learn things on the fly on the fly. So make of it what you can. You'll have a recording afterwards to kind of go back and brush up. Um, I'll do my best to play this consistently, which is always a challenge, right? Are y'all doing all right? Can you hear and see stuff fine? Okay. I'm glad we're getting to hang out. It's things are it's good to see people and soon enough we'll get to actually actually see people. So let me let me kind of sketch out the contours of this for you. Uh, let me I'll just play it kind of slowly for a second and uh, get it under my hands and then we'll kind of come back around. But you know, key idea for me when I think about um when I think about like claw hammer stuff, this is like kind of this might be a useful concept. So if if I like bored you with my rantings and ramblings about uh about Clyde and that community on the Tennessee Kentucky line, uh, this would be worth tuning back into. I'm in double D, yeah, just just standard old A D A D E from fifth down to the first. So. Um, what I wanted to say is like, when I think of claw hammer stuff, I, I think of, uh, you have like four, they're basically the way that I kind of work my claw hammer is with four things. There's like this initial downbeat and that's often the key melodic note. And I use my index and strike down. I, I think of claw hammer as having two aspects. There's like a gravity and then a trampoline thing. And those are always in play. And the way that I play, I kind of use my, like my, uh, my forearm as a bit of a fulcrum on the on the side of the banjo head so i'm striking down that's my first thing and then I, I often like will have a silent thumb if i'm just doing kind of a bum ditty so it's like down silent thumb bounce up so gravity trampoline and then the third piece so that's downbeat material now we're into the backbeat so like the the chuck if you were thinking guitar boom chuck this is the brush and i accomplished my brush this isn't like I know you don't need a claw hammer primer. I'm just telling you how I do it because it might be useful to understand where I'm coming from. So index strike, thumb catches, silently bounces up, and then I brush down. And I try to catch all four strings with my brush most of the time. A lot of the older players kind of do that. And then on the way down, I catch that thumb again with a kind of bent and bounce back up. So index strike, silent thumb, brush, thumb. So bum ditty bum ditty that's how i kind of think of it and then this thing is involves four pieces so when you have a double thumb you're incorporating you're just subdividing your bum ditty rhythm one two three four so all of these things or a drop thumb for that matter comes up with four things. So they, they all involve four things. And then if you ever try to finger pick, you can translate this stuff nicely. Anyway, that's how I conceive of this. And that's kind of how, when I like work through a tune, I'm usually kind of working in that rhythmic structure to figure stuff out.
closer to E flat. Sorry, let me get in my. I put the capo on and hadn't checked. Oh yeah. I'll be in proper D here. Can I play a, before I launch into this, I just thought, let me play a recording of Clyde playing this. Would you like to hear that? And then I'll, I'll share this, uh, this recording. It's my friend, Andy Khan made it. And it's, I think it's pretty neat. Um, I have a recording that I made of him too, playing it, but it's, he was older and it's, this is pretty spot on. And this was kind of what I used as my, um, my text. I think this will come through pretty clearly. So let me know if it's not, but here's, um, Oh, we've got a, that's the old one. Hold on. Here we go with the new one. All right. So here he is with Andy. So let's just listen through to this. I'm going to play it up to speed so you can kind of hear it and you'll have a, I'll send copies of this, but just uh, don't share beyond you and your, well, let's just keep it close. <laughs> strings y'all know about that right <laughs> that ever happened to you <laughs> so he's playing it in c there but um let's let's just kind of start working through this i'm gonna um do my best to make it make some kind of sense but my point with like talking through those sort of my approach to claw hammer is like everything in my mind kind of works out of that basic toolkit um it mostly follows the rules it kind of takes up a little slack in some places because this tune i guess is crooked i never can tell if tunes are crooked or not but uh <laughs> i think it is so let's let's just kind of get going with this long-winded wind up so our very first phrase is just going to be like a just a bum ditty on the second string and I, I end up kind of holding this chord and I, I end up brushing too. So it's bum ditty right there. And then I, I go into a, uh, he does a, he does two drop thumbs. And when I say drop thumb, I mean, that's one drop thumb. It's an inside, outside, inside, outside. So we got bum ditty and then we do drop thumbs, but each of those drop thumbs, the second half of it, we just return our finger to the second fret. Starts with an initial open string. Close it up. Open. 
and then we have the famous, I just call it like the descending drop thumb. It shows up all over the place. It's like the, so much stuff ends with that little trick. And all that is, is right, I'm striking index on the first, then thumb on second. And then I'm bringing my index down to the third at the second fret, catching the fifth. So that's just a drop thumb unit, the descending drop thumb unit. So if I say that again, that's what I'm talking about. All right. So we got bum ditty. Then we got a open, close, open, close, descending drop thumb. One more time with that. So let's build out from there. We got a hammer on, hammer on, second fret, third, open second, and then we're doing a drop thumb. So that phrase again is hammer on, second string. So let me put those two together. Zoom is so strange because it's, it's, there's no, uh, I can't hear or see or be in the room with you and sense whether or not I'm um, moving impossibly slow. Yes, Bridget. It, it, it's a bit too fast for me. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So I haven't, I haven't quite worked out the first bit and I think you're already onto the second bit. So apologies to everybody else if it's, if I'm the only one, but um, I'm getting a bit lost. Okay. Yeah. Um, the good news is this: there, will, you will have a video of this after. Yeah, if but but I'm I don't want to be lost in the no, lesson. I understand. So, um, yeah. If it also if it makes you feel any better, I uh, if I was sitting in this workshop, I couldn't. I can never follow anything in real time. It, I have to spend. Yeah. Afterwards, but I'll I'll move. I'll try to kind of uh, move at a pace where we can, mm -hmm. I'll do the best I can to shoot, okay. shoot the middle. All right, so we got just regular old bum ditty. Drop thumb, drop your thumb, descending. And then I'm hammering on. Second string. completed drop thumb sentence drop thumb index hammer on second string so i'm gonna put that just play that phrase slowly here okay the two together is that second string or excuse me is that second string or second fret a second fret hammer on and then follow okay up. you had said second string so i thought yeah. i was hitting the wrong string yeah and then i follow up on the with an open second string so let me just play that phrase and, and let's just see if we can settle into that Thumb, hammer on. 
skipping drop thumb, hammer on second. second string hammer on second string drop your thumb making some a little bit of sense. I'll, I'll roll out a little more for you. Let me play that up to speed and kind of just into the next so we can keep tabs on the bigger picture here. Dissection of tunes is always dicey business. You don't want to lose a spare part. If you were dissected, wouldn't you want them to keep tabs on all your parts? thing folks is that phrase repeats itself <laughs> all right can you dig that <laughs> it's good news on this saturday that phrase you get to play it two times in a row Two times in a row, and then we're going to go up, up and, and wrap this phrase up. Wait, by the way, I have to tell y'all, um, you know Lisa Kennard, right? Richardson, or some of you know Martin, um, and her daughter uh, Lisa, or uh, sorry, Martin's daughter Lisa Martin. I, I met them at uh, at Gainsborough back when I was there with the Bucking Mules. Um, she married my bandmate Luke Richardson, and they live out in Middle Tennessee. Calm was on here. Well, some of y'all have actually been over there, Kathy, you and Calm, um, to the wedding, which was a lot of fun. But they had a baby uh, just a couple weeks ago. So if you, uh, you might send congratulations, I think they're all doing well. It's exciting. So they're, she's uh, living out in Middle Tennessee with, with Luke and their baby Fern. So I guess that's not really my news to share, but I thought it was kind of exciting and some of y'all might know them. again. Open, close, open, close, descending, drop thumb, hammer on, open. So let me show you how we get to that sliding up so we've got our two two first phrases that we worked out and then we're going to slide up to second to fifth on the first over one bum ditty then we're going to do a bum ditty up at the seventh so bum ditty slide bum ditty seventh and then we're dividing a drop thumb 
with the first index strike being on the seventh fret. And then the second index strike will be on the second fret. This is kind of a thing that I did not catch for years. And then I finally, when I really sat down during the pandemic, because I just, you know, what else are we going to do um, when you're kind of stuck at home? Just obsess over banjo things. Why not? So I realized that this was this clever little thing that was happening, or at least I think it's happening. You might listen and then hear that it's actually not happening and you can just work it out yourself. But that little divided seven to uh, two. So you got two to five, seven, play that in context from the top. Is that so let's look at that piece that little second half one more time here two to five seven drop drop your thumb that little lick can you catch that so you start your drop thumb up at the seventh and then respond with the second so one two three four doing a little that descending drop thumb lick to wrap it up and then we're just kind of ending it the way that we ended the phrase that proceeded so that same little ending tag all right so let's let's try that uh to this second half of the part seven seven two descending drop thumb Hammer on, second string, drop your. And again, two to five, seven, set seven, two, drop your thumb, hammer on, open second. Lick again right there at the end is just a drop thumb and then index strike hammer on followed by a bum ditty where I'm just going to strike the second string and hold down the chord for the brush. So let's put that back in to play. Seven, seven, two, drop your thumb, hammer on. Second fret, drop your thumb hammer on second string, and again. together. I'm just going to roll through that for a sec here, uh, just that whole part, okay? Hopefully this is, this is, uh, you're getting a little bit of at least some of the edges and, and stuff, or maybe the whole thing. Um, Sending drop thumb, hammer on, 
second string. Then we're going up, two to five, seven, seven, two, drop your thumb. One of the last times that I visited Clyde, he was living in Monticello, Kentucky, and he had this house with a basement that was like, you know, it, it must have been like uh, somebody's somebody must have ran a business, like run a plumbing, you know, had had some kind of business where they had stored a bunch of stuff down in the basement, and um, it had the steepest steps in the world to get down to, you know, just totally break your neck kind of steps, and. Uh, Clyde was, you know, 95 or so and was insisted that we go down to the basement. And uh, so I, of course obliged. So we walked down into the basement and one thing that he always made was what he called dowsing rods. And so they were these, is that from it? Like he, he'd make these, and this is the thing about this man. I digress, I'm, I'm telling you a story cause I, it's kind of just like popped in my mind, but he, you never knew if he was being serious or just completely messing with you. And in this situation, he, uh, he, and the, I'd seen these things come out before. And so he had one that was like made for finding gold one for, and these are like little metal rods attached to a string and, you know, one that's made for finding gold, one that's made for finding diamonds, one that's made for finding silver and one that's made for finding paper money. <laughs> you could always find its way to your wallet, but, uh, so he took me down into the basement because he was, and I do not know whether he, he, he told me that his rods were telling him that there was gold buried in his basement. And this was like a concrete floor and that he wanted me to, he wanted me to go and grab stuff and bust up the floor to help him find this gold, which I don't think they own the house. I think they were renting this house. Anyway, it was like, I have a recording of us sitting there in the basement and him saying, well, there's gold. I think it was gold or maybe platinum, something strange that his rods had found. And then he pulled out the rod and held it and it was going. Anyway, I did not bust the floor of his basement open, but uh, that was a little weird story. Anyway, it's kind of amusing. Let me play that last bit up to speed.
I don't expect you to be able to do that right now. I just wanted you to hear it because it's nice to like kind of bring it back into where it would be. Um, and hopefully like one of the things that was interesting to me about this is because I, I play fiddle too. And this is a tune that I, I like and it gets played a lot. And I was just kind of curious to figure out like what um, both align my fiddle version with kind of what he does and then to figure out what he did on the banjo to accompany it because it's kind of a weird band it, it it can go different directions on a banjo and what i kind of love about his playing the way that he he kind of uh finds his way through the tune is that it, it's it's economical and it kind of what i had been doing beforehand was like much busier and this this is actually this kind of elegant streamlined polished um it's not minimalist, but it, it there's there's nothing extraneous in it, and I really love that about the way that he kind of goes about this. And so that's what inspired me to kind of figure out what was going on because it just seemed, it had an elegance to it and a, a stately kind of uh, clarity. Um, and so that's what that's kind of what has attracted me to this, and maybe. You know, when you listen to him, maybe you'll catch some of that too. Because this, of course, you can take this any number of ways. I'm sure some of y'all play this already, but so I thank you for wading through the this particular setting with me. Um, okay, so we got our whole first part down. I'm going to play into the second part for us. to the the high part and we're going to start we're going to lead into this with it uh so when i do bum ditties i have like uh my i call them brush bum ditties or just bum ditties and that's when i do a brush so i got index strike and then i'll end up brushing other fingers and catching my thumb but right here we're using a an index bum ditty right at the top of it and, and by that i just mean you strike twice with your index. In this case, the first strike is is right there on the uh, G, the third string, second fret. And then I'm following up with that second strike on the second string open. So bum ditty, just index, 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 index. And then what happens here, This I puzzled over the recording of this, and I could be totally wrong, but this is what the best I can come up with, and I'll share it with you, because that's all, that's all I can do. We're going to go seven. We're going to do a divided second. Start on the second fret, and then your brush, you're going to catch the fifth fret, of course. So it's going to sound like this. <laughs> so let me slow that down. All right. So you see how, because we need that melody note. There's other ways that we can get it, but you'll end up sounding like Wade Ward instead of Clyde Davenport. I had a little issue with that when I was trying to figure it out myself. play that phrase for you. That's familiar, right? 
right there. And then we're doing another index, index, bum ditty right there at the end. Open, striking first on the uh, third string and then going to the fourth fret of the fourth string. And wrapping it up with the bum ditty. So the way that comes together, index, index, two to five. and hammer on back for the brush so pull up drop your thumb index index let me do that again pull off hammer on descending drop thumb open to fourth fret index index Next, the response phrase is going to be, it's going to be starting the same way and, and wrapping up in a slightly different way that's pretty interesting. So let's take a second and, and look at that. And then I'll put them back together. Um, let's see. Paul, are you having a good beer there? <laughs> um, and then I... Can we just ask just quickly there, we've got one or two people who's is after um, a tab. Do you have a tab for this one, Jay? No, I, I don't. I could try to make one. Um, no, we'll sort it out afterwards. I'll, I'll sort one out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Or if somebody happens to be quick at making one, um, you could say, if, if somebody's really quick, some people are fast at that, send it to me and I can tell you if it's right and, or make corrections or something. But I, I can try to make one. Um, I am, I'm doing one as I go along. Sorry? I'm trying to do one as I go along. Oh, great. Yeah, but um, I'm, I haven't quite got the, that first line. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't got it completely, so but maybe you'll be coming back to that. Yeah, do you mean the first line of the tune or the of this part? No, no, this part, this part. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me, I'll, I'll walk you through that and then we'll jump into this, the way that it concludes. But We'll actually be using, we'll be, um, we're, we're going to use the same nuts and bolts that we used melodically. So, um, all right, so you got to index, index, bum, diddy, hammer on, second fret, third. Wrap your bum, diddy up with open second. Then we're going to two, bum, diddy divided with five. As your brush note, then you're gonna pull off, catch the second fret on your on your brush. So here's what that sounds like. Pull off hammer on. Then we're gonna do the descending drop thumb to the second fret of the G string. Then open G, fourth fret. That's an index, index, bum, ditty. So what that sounds like is this. Sorry. Drop your thumb, index, index. I keep hitting that fifth, fretting my fifth string. I don't intend to do that. <laughs> Clumsy fingers. So 
the next the response phrase is it starts exactly the same way with the index index and then the divided two to five now what i do for this one is i will do a i'll play i'll do a drop thumb coming back down this So that's drop. So it's like a drop thumb that's missing the fourth part of because I'm not playing the thumb. I'm going index, index, index. And that last index is that hammer on open. And then I'm wrapping it up by just doing a holding the chord and playing a bum ditty on the second string. Have to do two bum ditties there to account for the uh i think the crookedness of the tune maybe so here's what that ends up sounding like that's the ending phrase two five drop your thumb hammer on second string time and then I'm going to put it together with the the preceding part. Okay, so here's what these two parts of the the high part that we're working with sound like together. Just like put this B part into context, okay? Because it's a little like discombobulated. I might go a little long here. So hopefully, are folks okay to stick around for a minute or two to wrap the thing up? If you got to go, you got to go. But what am I going to do today? It's so nice out. Why would I want to go out? Don't no, just kidding. Hopefully, get outside here in a bit. But, uh, let me put this whole B part together. Just I gotta re I gotta put my brain back into it, and I imagine that yours are if mine is scrambled, yours are probably scrambled even more. too just to like kind of so take a little take a little like uh let's get a little bird's eye view distance for a moment and just kind of put it all back together
let's pull that. Uh, let's work our way back through the B part. So, or the high part, what we have, so we end up having like a little, just the way that the whole B part wraps up when you play through the second time through the B is you have this different ending. And so we'll, we can look at that for a sec. So I'm gonna just play an entire B part, okay? And then we'll we'll focus in on that last chunk. drifting I have to like pull my uh pull it all together because it's a little squirrely isn't it this is not an easy tune to convey necessarily and then I'm doing a fiddle workshop tomorrow it's kind of even weirder on the fiddle <laughs> so I appreciate your uh your humoring me um and joining me and Alan thank you for putting this together and whoever else worked on that I I'm it's fun to get to see people <laughs> okay so So I'm going to play you into that. That's how you would start it. And then you're going to go. So you're just going second fret, two bum diddies, second fret, G string. phrase that we've been using before so here we go and i guess you could play like the the minor chord there which would just be the uh first and third string second fret but i, I end up probably just playing the just the one note because i kind of like to leave it a little unfinished it to what comes before it just to to help kind of to help us keep keep uh tabs on where we are and to make sure that i'm not leading you down some insane path of uh of doom
Is there some uh, is there some sense of what's happening with that? Um, it's kind of like a thing that you have to play to get to really understand what happened, what's happening. And then I have Clyde's watchful eye sort of silently casting judgment, or perhaps it's Tiny the dog who's really the one who judges banjo playing. What does Tiny think? What do you think of this stuff, Tiny? Probably thinks it's dubious. So let me play that, uh, that B part, this whole B part, okay? It's kind of, just play through it slowly and if uh, if you um, if there's a point of question, flag it in your mind, and then you can ask me for clarification. But let's see if I can just play this slowly, the B part, and um, if it raises any questions, let me know. But I'll try to make all things clear. If nothing else, do the contours and the kind of directions that the thing moves make some sense on as far as that part goes? Um, I wouldn't expect you to catch everything some of you may have, and um, but you will have a opportunity to like look at this video. Um, trying to think of yeah. So did any was there any like a particular thing that you're like I just don't I can't catch what was happening in a particular moment. Is it? Yes. I think I'm still sorry. I'm still a bit uncertain uh, with the sort of it's, it seems like a variation on the end of the B, that sort of second second that, time around. Yeah, yeah. and I, I I lose it at a certain point. So I lose it from where you've got your you you're doing. <laughs> And then a bit after that, I lose it. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that, that's kind of, we didn't spend a whole lot of time there. So it's uh, two, two bum ditties on that, that note. And then I'm just doing a, a second, I'm striking the second string, but, but brushing the chord. So second fret, second fret, open second string. Kind of emphasizing that note. 
And then it's from there that I lose it. It's okay. from that point that I've got here. Yeah, let me, let me walk, let me walk through that. Descending drop thumb lick. So index first, thumb second, right? Yeah. Then we're going to hammer on. Okay, so you got the hammer on, second fret, I mean second string. And then we have this, here's the like the thing that you might be missing, which is a little weird. So it's just that half, it's like a, the, the yeah, that's three the quarter It's the same as it was before. Right, we're ending it just that I same. I'm there now, I think I'm, I've got that last, that very last bit I've got. It's Wonderful. The, <laughs> it's that little bit. <laughs> I think I've got it now. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks for asking. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, you know, if one thing that I think is, if I'm sure some of you are familiar with the Field Recorders Collective, which has, um, it's a fantastic resource. And if you're not, I'll just explain what it is briefly. It's, it's like a collection of field recordings that were made of different old players and um they have uh they have a lot of their content available on Bandcamp and they have two they made there's two discs two CDs of Clyde's music that are available there the field recorders collective mm -hmm. worth checking out they also have a DVD of his playing which you could order um but those those are you can actually download and stream the stuff from Bandcamp, if you just want to go and hear some more of this. And then there's so many other wonderful players who are there. And the uh, organization tries to use, it's a nonprofit, and they try to use whatever whatever money they make, they try to send it back to the families of the musicians, which is, I think, a fantastic, um, responsible, ethical thing to do. Um, let's see. What other, yeah, so the, and there's some, some more of Clyde's banjo playing is there. Um, so this was, you know, this is an interesting exercise that you can play this however you want. Um, and I, I appreciate you taking some time to mess around with this particular setting and maybe, you know, maybe some of it will stick or maybe some of it's interesting. Um, it's certainly a little bit of a rabbit hole that I went down and I kind of enjoyed it. Um, just getting into his mind. So I think that um, that, what I might do, just I might just play the tune slowly a time or two through if you want to try to kind of cobble it together. Um, and what else do I need to, let's see, hold on. Could, could you just um, go through in detail what you were meaning by descending drop thumb? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, okay, so this is a, in the like licks that you have in the banjo, the claw hammer toolkit, one of the things that I end up using a lot and that I hear a lot of people use is, uh, I call it a descending drop thumb. And all this is, is like, I'm striking my index. So let's, the first index strike is on the, like the first string, then the thumb plays the second string. So that's the first half of the drop thumb. And then the index will go to a, it will go to a lower string. So like in this case, first string, second string, third string, fifth string. So by descending, I mean that we're like, we're bringing our hand is actually descending and well, it's not in air. It's actually, you know, compared to the ground, it's moving upwards, but in tone, it's moving downwards. So we're going. That's that's the thing that's happening. So here's your downbeat, backbeat, so that's a descending drop thumb. And a lot of times that shows up at ending phrases in like and this, you know, you'll end up fretting uh, something. It, often you kind of land on the G string. This happens in other keys. I'm trying
trying to think of just oh here let me show you just another example of how that would show up um like a tune like uh i, I call giorgio is what matoki slaughter called this it's just like a real simple this next part. it's going to be like uh um if i were if it were at the beginning of the workshop i could give you more examples but my brain's like too uh spread thin but that's descending drop thumb if you listen to the way that a lot of claw hammer players will wrap up phrases it often resorts to that so does that make sense as what as the technique So let me, yeah, I'll just play through the whole tune and we'll kind of uh, go from there. Um, okay, so I'll just play it a few times. One, two, ready, go.
again. that makes some kind of sense. Um, my brain is, is, this tune hurts my brain in a way. I imagine it's hurting yours too. We should all go and uh, take a little break here, but uh, I guess we'll wrap it up. I appreciate um, your, your being here and uh, hopefully this will give you something to mess around with. Um, I do like, I'm mostly doing music-y teaching things these days. So if you ever want to 
do a lesson or anything or you know somebody who might feel free to send them my way I, I try to i enjoy doing this this is a hard tune to learn so pat yourselves on the back it's it's squirrely um usually for like a workshop on zoom i would you know it's, it's nicer to do kind of i like to do like a broad kind of uh con you know like some other kind of thing that's a little bit more easily digested but uh y'all are brave people for sticking it sticking sticking with it um and if if you have any kind of interest in banjo stuff please sign up for that banjo workshop thing it'll be fun and i think that i probably you know this felt you know this tune kind of is a little bit in the weeds um but i think that stuff i'm going to try to kind of often keep the bigger picture and kind of give look at toolkit kinds of things i'm always interested in that and just refining what 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 i do and stuff or you know thinking about right hand technique so um thanks alan thank you all uh it's good to see some familiar faces and I think, uh, you know, it seems like we're on the upside of we're, we're moving into a better place with all of this mess. Um, so. Yeah, well, thanks thank very you, much. Joseph. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Good to see everyone. Yeah. yeah. Thank, you. thank you, Joe, very much. See some of you tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 I'll send you a um a link with the uh recording that you can yeah. yeah, magic. Thank you. Mm. I can then fire that around to anyone who wants it. I've got a number of people who, who asked for it who couldn't make today as well. So great. Superb. Thanks very much. Yeah. It's, it's one of those tunes, isn't it? It's it's um once you, you get it in your mind and you, you get playing with a group of people, and it goes on for hours. I mean, <laughs> the B part's always slightly awkward because most people play it slightly different, don't they? Um, mm. It's good to sort of get that viewpoint on it. But yeah, no, it's a great tune when it gets going. It sure is. Um, any, any questions before I sign off here? No, I don't think everyone's spoken if they need to, I think. Mm -hmm. I've, I've got two very brief questions that one of them i missed the beginning and the name of the tune <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Andy, uh, five miles from town or to town or out oh, of town yeah. thank you and then the other one um so i'm in wales and i'm always interested in um welsh appalachian or kind of uh oh, you missed that bit you missed the welsh appalachian link <laughs> no, well, I, I heard, I heard, uh, Joseph, you, you, you mentioned that there were loads of, there was an area that was, uh, had Welsh people or Welsh connections. I was just interested in where, where was that? Yeah, it's, um, it's in Hamilton County, Tennessee. So I grew up down there. It's near Chattanooga. And there was a community mm -hmm. called Bakewell. Um, and there's, there was, there were coal mines there. Mm -hmm. That I guess you know I don't know when these were established, like late eighteen hundreds, uh, and so there's like a, there was a community of of Welsh people who were there, and there's a cemetery of you know that is like the Welsh cemetery. Is it? Is it um, did people know if they were Welsh language, or did they are the are the graves in well in the Welsh language? Or? You know, I have not explored that cemetery. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. That that's a really fast. I that makes me really curious now to go. It's it's kind of like a six hour drive away. So, but I, <laughs> I I'm over that way. No, just the road. Yeah, it's interesting to think about to to figure out if that um, if the language was sustained. There. Yeah. No, I've I've heard tales of kind of uh, songs and different things that are still sometimes you can still come across them in different places like there's little pockets where um sometimes it seems like some welsh language songs and things have been passed along so i'm just curious to try and trace them a little bit but yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. thank you yeah thank you very much for the workshop yeah well is there any other question or i'll we'll sign off there Someone's well, I, I, uh, I, I like to substitute some of the drop thumbs. I, I tend to use more hammer-ons and pull-offs than drop thumbs, but I get 
as long as we get the same sound at the same time, I don't really mind. So, yeah, I guess that's okay. You know, you can't necessarily replicate exactly somebody's fingerings and uh, yeah. move, movements. You know, Clyde was always puzzled why people would want to like, I mean, it, you know, it's a true, like you can't sound like somebody other than yourself at the end of the day, right? And that's kind of what's fun about this music is that it it's durable and it it takes, it can handle these, it can handle the things that you bring to it. And, uh, you know, Clyde would always be amused at the fact that he'd sit there and like name, you know, there's people from Japan who've come to see me. There's people from Germany, people from England, people from Italy have come over here to see me to try to learn how to play like me. He always was amused by that. And, and I think kind of recognize that, you know, you can't, just like somebody else, but you can try. I just the, the puzzle of it and trying to, I end up learning things that I can then apply to my own kind of, you know, just by yeah. deep dive is a great, it's instructive. Mm. I think, think when you say that, um, I sometimes find that sometimes when I'm playing the tune, I'll play a, a sure. pull off. And another time I'll do a drop thumb, you know, things like that. It just, and somehow or other, it just happens. It's not planned. I just find I've done something different in a tune. <laughs> well, I had worked this tune up very carefully, you know, months ago. And I was sitting this morning trying to bring it all back together. And think, <laughs> it's insane. I, I can't. How did I do that? I can't yeah. replicate this after, you know, because it does, things wonder. And that's what's, it's fun. And mm -hmm. I, I rarely with my banjo playing have I tend to just try to figure out what makes the music at the moment you know and what if I'm playing with the fiddler like what suits what's happening right and because I mm, that could make a difference can't it the fiddler quite a bit yeah yeah okay yeah. yeah thank you very much thank you very much all so right I really enjoyed it very much. see you tomorrow all right. Thank you very much. Very good. Yeah. I'll say thanks as well and I'll sign off for now. Yeah, hope man. to see you again soon, Joan. Yes, hope to. Right. Lovely to see you, Michael. Yeah. Bye. 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 Uh oh. Wait up. Oh. How was your connection, Alan?